Good evening, everybody. Nice uh, Christmas, Christmassy uh, weather here in Pittsburgh. <clears throat> About three inches of snow on the ground, which is a lot for Pittsburgh. Uh, 61 in Denver. That's backwards. Anyways, we're going to do a little bit of uh, trend analysis, specifically the uh, trend channels, which we already had this scheduled. And then we're going to go to live charts to kind of analyze what we do or what you should be prepared to do in this type of market condition. So with that, uh, obviously the trend analysis is much greater enhanced when we know the 12 major signals and what each one of those signals represent. So we can see when there's a change of trend, especially when those uh, signals occur right smack dab on areas that everybody else is watching, like the 50-day moving average. Then we can see we've done a bullish engulfing left right combo then we can see it traded up above the t-line breaking this downward trend channel telling us we had a high probability of another strong trend like wave one wave two going into wave three so the rhetorical question why is trend analysis uh uh important well obviously we want to know which direction we want to be positioning our uh our portfolio. You're going to have uptrends, you're going to have downtrends, you're going to have sideways trends, which has a completely different uh, uh, portfolio management than if uh, um, uh, the uh, if, obviously if we're in an uptrend, we're probably going to be 80% uh, positive or uh, long in our portfolio. If we're in a, uh, we know that waves or prices move in waves, we're in a downtrend, we're probably going to be 80% uh, to the down, uh, to the downside or short. Now, the one that can is very uh, clearly illustrated or much more illustrated are trend channels. I can remember years back there was somebody promoting how you make millions of dollars trading trend channels, and I'm thinking, well, that's so simple. Um, oh, uh, John, the way you make your screen bigger is up above in the gray uh, uh, gray uh, line. There's a box that has the arrows pointing out. If you click on that, that will expand your uh, charts. Uh, so they're bigger. You did that? I don't know what to tell you then. Yeah, they should be shouldn't be from this end. Um, yeah. So if you can identify a trend channel, you become much more. Uh, clear as to when to be buying and selling based upon where the buy signals occurring and where the sell signals occurring. So obviously, if we see a sell signal like a doji and a lower open the next day, that pretty much tells you the top of the trend channel is acting as resistance. Anytime you can draw a trend channel, it's very simple. You've got two points that you can draw a line through. Then you can just draw from one point, kind of a parallel line to that, and you've got your trend channel, which means once you've established this trend channel, it becomes much more uh, clear when bottoming action is occurring and where the selling might occur. So obviously, if we're in the overbought condition, even without this trend channel, we started seeing a move away from the T-line and start seeing shooting star type signals. 
that's pretty much a warning to say, all right, get ready for a reversal. But then when you can add the uh, the visual of, uh, factor that it's occurring right smack dab at the top of that channel, that allows you to move a lot more faster. Um, I get no sound. Ah. Guess I can't help him. I'll make the chat box smaller. There you go. Okay. So we know that there's investor truisms with candlesticks, such as. Uh, the further away you move from the T-line, you're more likely going to see it come back and test the uh, T-line. When you can start adding that all up, up where you're starting to see sell signals confirmed at a resistance level and that far away from the T-line, the prospects are you're heading back down. Anytime you can draw that, that channel or two, two points and establish a trend channel, if this was your Point one, this is your point two, this is your point three. You could draw a line through one and three. Then you could do a parallel line uh, where it pulls back. Not that it's going to support here, but you've got a much higher probability that if you start seeing sell or buy signals occurring right in here, it's confirming this trend channel. When it heads back up, where are you likely to move to? If you extrapolate that trend channel out, or the top of the channel, that's right where it topped out. You see a bearish harami in the overbought condition. Oh, damn. Uh, in the overbought condition, if it confirms, where do you think the next target is? Obviously, back here, the T line. What's that tell you about this? If that now worked as an effective resistance level, Consider going short again. So where? Well, you can see what happened down here. Bounced off the 200. Uh, did a morning star signal off this bottom trend channel. Where's your next potential target? Back to the top of the trend channel. How do you scan? You don't scan, Vince. Uh, uh, it's usually going to be visual. That as soon as you can see, there's two points. Then you can draw your, you start drawing your lines and say, all right, it's starting to back off from here. Where's my next target? Let's draw a trend channel. Um, so I have to look at 5,000 stocks. No, Vince, you're not scanning for trend channels. Here's looking to see when a trend channel might be setting up. So let's say you were trading this stock and it came back up here and rolled over a second time. So if you were long, you took your profits. But then you could also see that if you cut the chart off right here, that you had a point here and a point here. Now, if you drew a line through there, what's your parallel line? Let me see if it comes back to that parallel line. So you're not trying to scan for trend channels. You're basically looking for a trend channel setup. Now you have something to trade off of with much more clarity because of your candlestick signals. The more a trend channel stays in effect, the higher the probabilities are that you're going to make some good money by closing out your shorts here and buying, closing out your longs here and going short. Uh, yes, um, but the whole point of using candlesticks in the trend channel is you've got much more clarity as to where the sell signals are occurring. In this case, the sell signals occurred right smack dab at the same level it topped out before over here. So if you drew a parallel line here, where was your next potential target? Somewhere down in this area. Once it hits that 
area and you start seeing buy signals, you know the probabilities are pretty strong that that's your bottom and you get ready to go long with the anticipation that you're heading back up to the top of the 10 channel. Yeah, so if you've got a software that Jason is putting out, that they identify the trend channels, you've got much more benefit to trading off those trend channels because you can see exactly what type of signals or patterns are occurring at those levels. Uh, either or, all you're really looking at is where did they reverse it? Doesn't matter whether these two lines are exactly parallel, but in either case, it doesn't matter where you draw that trend, trend channel. You can just pick out two points and then create your other line. So the whole important uh, facet of trend channels is identifying a support and resistance level. So again, anytime you have two points, and it starts selling off, at least you know the prospect is coming back down to the bottom of that trend channel. Now, trend channels also work when you're in an uptrend. As long as it stays in this trend channel, you know you're still in an uptrend. And notice, uh, again, how you can analyze the overall market based upon evening star signal, that far away from the T line, stochastics rolling over. Where was your first target? Wanted to see what was going to happen at the 50. At the 50, they told you they weren't going to support there. So where's your next target? The 200. What happened at the 200? Your morning star signal and a close back up above the team line. This is what we call convergence analysis. The more pieces of evidence that we can see that uh, there's a reversal, the higher the probabilities are going to be in in the correct direction. In this case. A doji where it hit a low right smack dab on the 200. The castings in the oversold area. The next day opens positive and starts trading positive. Remember our morning star signal. The further it closes above this halfway point of the previous candle, the stronger the reversal is going to be. Big move to the upside. Next, they close it above the T line. Next, they have a bullish uh, confirmation the next day. All the elements of, you don't have to be a sophisticated technical in, investor. All you have to do is read what the uh, signals are uh, showing you at uh, important support and resistance levels. Oh, uh, Nancy, on my charts, the red line is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. And probably on this chart, the gray line is the 20-day simple moving average. And the reason we have those on our charts is that every major money manager uses those moving averages to make decisions about their portfolio. Now, we recently changed from the 20 to the 34 exponential moving average, which I'd used years ago, and it worked more effectively than the 20. The 20 usually works much better if you're in a long, steady uptrend. The 34 has more relevance and relevancy to it, um, but we're, that's why I went back to using that. So anytime I see a channel setting up, I'm looking at what type of pattern might tell me this channel is breaking out. Otherwise, what's this telling me right here? If I was trading something that looked like this, I wouldn't be in it. There's just no direction to it. Now I can see the J-hook pattern breaking out through this level. I know my prospects are much greater for a new trend to the upside. Or if I see a wedge formation, again, part of your uh, uh, part of your uh, analysis is watching what everybody else is watching. Yeah, let's see. I, Ah, humbug. Uh, well, Shazam. Yeah, I've got the tops cut off. I don't know how. Uh, 
Um, so look at our wedge. Again, a conversion convergence analysis. Stochastic's coming back up, bouncing up off the 50 through the uh, T line, breaking out of this wedge, telling us our next wave uh, is in progress. My stochastics are 1233 slow stochastics. All right, so a wedge breakout is just like a channel breakout, except the wedge you can see is compressing. And what adds to our benefit? using candlestick signals because right here at the point of this uh, wedge we can see there's a left right combo right off the 50 and they break out by confirming that signal the next day this puts us in an extremely high probability trade setup that we're in the right direction so your wedges can be a horizontal wedge where it's just kind of sideways what are we looking for out here either a break in this direction or a break in this direction so you can use that for market trend analysis. Again, kind of a wedge on the Dow, and they gap it up through the top of the wedge. Pretty strong evidence that we're now in a new uh, uh, new trend. Uh, uh, Marshall, yes. You can use whatever time frame. This chart right here could be a Dow five minute chart, 30 minute chart, hourly, weekly, monthly. They all look exactly the same. You don't change any of the criteria the 50, the 200, the T line, stochastics all stay exactly the same. So if you think this is breaking out and that you're worried about it pulling back, yeah, you flip to your 10-minute chart, and if your 10-minute chart looks like this, where it's staying above the T-line, that tells you this candle is going to continue to break out. So what we're looking for, obviously, on the big price moves are your trend breakouts. Anything that time we can see a pattern setting up, like a fry pan bottom, we're looking for the breakout. Notice our doji sandwich breakout. Look at our fry pan bottom breakout. Again, this was back uh, a few weeks ago when the bitcoms were were working. Where does a fry pan bottom usually break out? Right about where it starts. And again, opposite of what a signal uh, does, where we're looking for buy signals in the oversold area, usually a pattern breakout is going to occur when your stochastics are already up in the overbought area. So the relevancy of this analysis is what is the pattern doing? Not necessarily where you are you with your stochastics. Anytime we can see that pattern, there's our fry pan bottom breakout. Then notice what ha happened on the consolidation. There's kind of our a, a wedge type formation breaking out again to the upside. Anytime I see something there's our slow curve breakout that gets you past the hesitancy of boy i don't want to buy a stock it's already up 10 15 20 30 percent i don't want to chase after it you do if you can see what type of pattern uh was prior to that breakout there's kind of our little scoop pattern there's our doji sandwich there's our Morning star left to right combo right off the uh, off the 50. Telling you the buying has started. What are we looking for here at the handle? A breakout. That gives us that strong uh, uh, slingshot effect. J hook pattern breakout. Right where the pattern starts. Right pan bottom breakout. Right where the pattern starts. So. This is not rocket science. This is just evaluating what happens in human nature time after time and utilizing the candlestick signals and knowing where those candlestick signals might be occurring to give you a very strong price move. You can see the downward resistance level. You can see the gap up off a, uh, a doji bullish confirmation gap up through the uh, that resistance level off the 50 with stochastics coming up 
that just puts you in a, a high probability trade setup. Oh, this is Friday. I don't know which Friday it was. But again, there's our breakout through the resistance level, telling us there's much better uh, prospects for the upside. So the nice thing about candlestick is it's easy visual setups. You don't have to be no all that much other than a pattern works the same way time after time and if we can add the, the uh high probability aspects to it such as uh, this is our resistance level and we've got kind of a j-hook pattern setting up and we've got a doji sitting right on the resistance level what's our simple doji rule it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So if it opens positive and you haven't gotten in earlier, you're waiting for the breakout, you could be buying immediately because what's your risk reward? Your reward is you probably got a very strong price move. What's your risk factor? That if you bought here and it closed back down just below the open of this candle somewhere, what'd that tell you about your breakout? It didn't work, you're right back out with that small loss and potential of a big gain. So if you see a setup like this, where you can see where the uh, resistance level is, you put it on your watch list, get ready for it to, to break out to the upside. So again, candlesticks are the graphics of the most consistent indicator in the world, and that's human nature. So. Human nature makes trend analysis extremely easy. So especially for uh, people trying to buy breakouts or trade a trend channel, because we know what each individual signal represents, we can take advantage of buying right at the appropriate time without hesitancy. And the reason why I say without hesitancy is there's a lot of technical uh, trading methods that tell you to wait until you get a certain percentage or a number of days. So when other people are buying up here, we're buying right here or right here, which does two things for us. It tells us we're in the right direction. So that when everybody else's technical indicators kick in, it's adding profitability to our trade. Or two, if we're buying here and it closes back down here, we're back out with a fairly small loss. So with that, uh, I guess uh, Pat's got a special for us uh, on the trend channels. Might take a look at that. Uh, just give you something to review and know uh, or pick up a uh, trading strategy. The re reason I say trading strategy, uh, on the 24th, we're going to be doing our keep saying four hour training session. It's probably gonna be closer to six hours, but we're gonna go through about eight or nine trading strategies that are very effective using candlestick signals and patterns. Now, we're not showing it so that you have eight or nine trading strategies. A lot of people say, man, there's so many good trade setups based upon your, uh, your scanning or your uh, chart analysis. How do we pick out the ones and how do we remember all these? You don't have to. After you go through the eight or nine uh, trading strategies, you pick out the one that you identify the easiest or think you could trade the easiest, and maybe only use two or three of those strategies. And once you become adept at those, you don't, now I say once you become, once you become adept at those, you may not ever need another uh, trading strategy. As long as you've found something where you know when to get in, when to get out, and which ones or what results you're looking for to tell you if you've got a good strong trade or you get right back out because the trade's not working. So instead of trying to pick out the best trades every single day, you trade your trading strategies. They're going to give you a much more consistent uh, return. So anyways, uh, she's got a special... Uh, is that right?
Becky, is that right? Somebody's saying that the uh, link, let me click on the link. Well, that's not working. You're right, something's wrong. We'll get it fixed. All right, that's not good. Hold on for one second. Abe. All right, I'll have Abe fix that hopefully before we're done. All right, uh, I'm going to close this out and bring up the live charts because I think it's going to be a lot more. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, Becky. Becky's going to post the link to the our February 24th training, and I've got Abe working on figuring out what happened to our, our link tonight. All right, hold on, uh, Rick. I will... Uh, Will I do? I'll bring up these charts. Now, people have been asking, aren't you concerned about this market? And my answer is, heck no, this is a good, profitable market. And why was that? Because about a week ago, let me bring it up here. Region. About a week ago, we had a sell signal in the market that was more compelling or different than any sell signals that we'd we'd experienced over the past year. It works in a separate browser. All right. Rick, you tell me when you're you're up and running. Uh, Frank, these charts are uh, okay. Here we go. These are CQG, which I don't recommend. CQG is the uh, grandfather of all the charting systems out there. I pay about thirteen hundred dollars a month for these charts, but I use them for trading my. Uh, my uh, I put, trade futures during the day, which these are very good for. But software like Metastock or TC2000 or most brokerage firms have chart, charts that work just as effectively. Um, however. Uh, Juan, you want to trade 
what they call the front month. That's going to have the most activity in it. So, again, all the no matter what month you're trading, they will all be uh, good charts. But if let's say the uh, oh, let's say the February contract isn't trading very much because everybody's already flipped over to 90 days out. I forget what that would be, March, April, May. Maybe the May contracts. Yeah, that's where the big volume is going to be and where they, they trade. Yes, Ninja Traders should have it. Uh, it's a good uh, software. Plus, they've got all our uh, formulas there for, for candle start or for candlesticks. Where is the 200 SMA in the Dow? It is down here. So this is what we're kind of analyzing. First of all, it wasn't uh, any great anticipatory analysis. Um, what MAs are being used on this chart? The red line is your 200 simple. The blue line is your 50-day simple. The gray line now is your 34 EMA exponential. And the black line is your T line. Um, you do any futures trading seminar or webinars? Yes. Usually do that in the members area um, every couple of months. Yeah, so part of uh, being a member of the uh, Candlestick Forum is not only the Thursday night and Monday night sessions, but we try at least once a week to have another training session. Now, all these training sessions are on video or on trainings that, as a member, you could buy at a discount. Or you wait, or a lot of people say, well, let's do one on scanning. So we'll do one on how you scan. Um, um, scan for the best trades or we might do a night where we do where you set your logical stop losses uh, or your entry and exit strategies things that you want to apply to your candlestick uh, trading that's going to improve the probabilities of being in a good trade or getting you out of a bad trade very quickly so part of your uh, membership is not only uh, the Monday night sessions for members and the uh, chat room that's open all day long that we, we discuss things. But uh, uh, we're also, uh, we do a special one every, uh, right now we're doing the basic of candlestick signals on Wednesday night, which is open to everybody, but it gives the members a chance to refresh their, their memory. Remember the whole basis of candlestick analysis is the bricks and mortar are the signals themselves. So back to why were we mostly short? Because up here, Dow wasn't actually a signal, but the gap down through the T-line was the first time in a year that prices gapped down uh, below the T-line. That told you there was a completely new uh not strategy, a new dynamic in the investor sentiment. You can see the bearish Harami in the NASDAQ, followed by a gap down, and it rolled over. So we were starting to short, not starting to short. Longs had been working well, and there was a few that we were starting to take profits on. And when they gapped it down, instead of going back into new longs, we started adding a few more shorts. So that's where just the uh, natural evolution of your money management or your portfolio management was if we were long eight or nine positions up here we might have closed out a long position and maybe added a good short because we were so high up and when they gapped down we may have closed out a couple longs and added a couple more shorts so by this time we're now probably short eight positions long two so this doesn't bother us at all. As a matter of fact, as you can see, this has made huge profits. Now, what do you do on days like this? Well, we had a big piercing signal right here at the 50. 
But what were the things that kind of warned us about jumping in with both feet at this point? Number one, we were still below the T-line. Number two, look where we were with stochastics. We weren't quite in the oversold area. So the, both of those would have given us a little bit of a uh, warning to say, let's just not jump back in. Logic says we need to see a close or another strong confirmation of this candle right here before we want to jump in. Well, the fact that they took it up, notice where they resisted, right smack dab on the 34, and then closed lower. What did that tell us about the uh, strength of the bulls? It wasn't there yet. So we closed out a couple of short positions with profits, but left most of them on and because it didn't confirm now let's see if i can do this correctly notice that there was a doji type day in the s p and the dow so what was our uh uh what was our analysis at that point we've got a very simple rule of the doji it's going to move in the direction how they open after a doji so the fact that they opened it lower today told us exactly what we needed to know. They weren't coming up through the T-line yet. They were still in a downtrend. So where's our next logical target? Being still slightly out of the uh, oversold area. I would suspect we'll have another day to the downside where they test the 200. Yeah, it's kind of an evening star signal, but remember an evening star signal, you want the Kazakhs here, but it's got the same relevancy. They took it up, Day of indecision and took it right back down. Who's in control? The bears are still in control. How did we kind of figure where the bears were in control? Because there was no confirmation of this bounce, which would have been at least a close above the 50, and then hopefully and then a close above the uh, uh, the, the T line. So just the whole fact that there wasn't enough strength in here told you, ah, eh, let's not cover all our short positions. Let's wait to see what happens the next day. Have you been holding your short in queue since you shorted first after the gap down? Not so much the NQs, meaning the NASDAQ, but by this time in here, the portfolio went from being about eight long positions to being about seven short positions and then a couple more shorts here so we're predominantly short and i think i'll have enough to, to show how about if the dow gaps down if the dow gaps down or any of them gap down right to the 200 get ready to start taking profits immediately because if they gap down to the 200 where do you think every money manager in the world right now is watching? We're waiting to see what happens once it gets to the 200. Okay, I'm going to run through a few real quick on the long side. There's JNCE. On positive trading, you've got a J hook pattern and what looks like to be the classic pattern. Remember, our classic pattern is a fry pan bottom breakout. Notice where this broke out. Right about where the, uh, the fry pan started. And how did it do that? With a doji sandwich. It's uh, through the, this level as well as the 200. And what do we know about the doji sandwich? There's going to be more upside. What do we know about a fry pan bottom breakout? There's going to be more upside. What happens when it comes up here and there's profit taking? Well, if it does a J hook, this is what we call the classic, which is the fry pan bottom breakout, which creates a very strong price move, a pullback, and a J hook pattern. And what's the prerequisite for a J hook pattern? A very strong price move. So that combination works over and over. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what you're trading or how you're trading. You can either be buying the stock and or you're buying the calls if you're, if you're an option trader. 
kind of the same scenario on ADVM. You can see the inverted hammer spinning top, now starting back up, coming out of a big fry pan bottom. Uh, look for that to be a, a good positive trade. Now, you also have to remember, look at what these charts did today, trading a positive on a day when the Dow is down 1,000 points. That tells you that the patterns have more relevancy than what the overall market is doing. Now, Riot just climbed up above the uh, T-line, isn't doing anything strong, but at least now you can watch this. But if there's any more buying, you can be buying this one based on it uh, trading above the T-line. And there's the kicker signal. This is your strongest of all the candlestick signals. It opened here, closed here. The next day, they gapped it up above the open and went in this direction. That tells you they kicked the investor sentiment in the opposite direction. Notice what this one has been doing over the last three or four days when the market's been going straight down. So this isn't uh, anything more than identifying the signals and patterns that have worked effectively for the last 400 years based upon the Japanese rice traders identifying where there's been a reversal. Keeping an eye on RENN, because it's doing a little inverted hammer harami right smack dab off the 200. Well, what's the other relevant factor uh, for this one? Very simple. If this starts trading positive, it doesn't have to move. I mean, it's got big percentage moves where this just comes back up to the uh, uh, this area. It's got a 25% move. You've got 25, 50, 75, 100% uh, price moves on this one. And HIBB, there's your left right combo, inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. I'd be a buyer of this one on positive trading because then you'd have your very strong reversal signal right off the 50-day moving average up through the T-line. What could we anticipate from here? Wave one, wave two, wave three in progress. Wave three, likely to be the same magnitude as wave one. Okay, now on the other side, Today, we recommended shorting SIMO because you can see the dumpling top. Anytime you see that dumpling top, that's the opposite of your fry pan bottom. That tells you when they get down here, what's happening? Everybody's scared. They've been losing money, losing money, get me out of this. That's where the, the uh, selling starts to pick up uh, steam to the downside. So just like a fry pan bottom shows you where there's going to be a strong bullish move, the dumpling top shows you where there might be big, strong uh, bearish moves going the opposite direction. So anytime you see this big rounding rollover, notice what started the force to this one to the downside. After it got down with a little bearish uh, best friend, Doji gap down. Then we had, it tried to come up through the T-line and did a bearish kicker signal. Just forcing, uh, yeah, to go, Sophie, going short means uh, the whole strategy in making money in the market is buying low and selling high. Going short is the same concept, except it's backwards. You want to be selling here, and then if you buy back down here, you've made the profit of a difference. Uh, so if you were shorting this one at 1750, and tomorrow you bought it back at 13, well, you've made four and a half points. You you sold it first and then bought it back. That's what shorting is: is selling first and then 
find back later. Uh, Ramesh, you could have shorted here. You could have shorted here. And so far, there hasn't been anything to tell you there's any buy signals, so you stay short. Where's your next likely target? I would anticipate right down in this area. Now, when I say anticipate, if I was short this one and it hit this level tomorrow, I'd be a lot more watchful to see if that's time to, to, uh, oh, uh, to start taking profits. Or you could buy puts, yes. Yeah, I think FCX, yeah, Freeport. Yes, big dumpling top. So look at the basic concept of this one. There's your little fry pan bottom breakout. How long did you stay long? Let's get rid of this thing. Until you saw a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now, how could you trade this dumpling top? You can't. Whenever you start seeing a rounding top and there's no way to trade it long or short, get ready for the breakdown on the other side. MTRX. This is the adage of where do most people sell? A panic sell at the bottom. So what did it do today? It did a gap down in the oversold area. So what should be your first alert? You should be ready to start taking profits uh, because of this gap down. Now, if I was short this one, tomorrow I'd have my stop at today's open. If there's enough strength after gapping it down to come back up through the open, that tells me it's time to close out that position. LPI. This one's to illustrate look where your best friend occurred. Failed right at the 200. Then you had your best friend bury signal. How long do you stay short on this until you see a buy signal? And cores. There's your bearish belt hold. This is one of the major uh, patterns that you always want to be aware of. If they've gapped it up and immediately started selling it off, what's that tell you about the uh, bullish enthusiasm? It's definitely not there. Get ready to go short because that tells you there's a lot of selling force. Uh, I don't trade Forex, uh, uh, Daniel, because it's, it's about which way one uh, currency is going versus another. So I'll just trade the currencies outright. For example, you can see where the bullish engulfing signals occurred in the dollar. Right now it's in an uptrend. It's hit the 34. This is after hours trading. So I just trade the currencies uh, by themselves. Oh, let's see why we're here. NVIDIA announced their earnings. The, I think the last it was trading somewhere in here. Is that where it is? Around uh, 233, 234. So watch for a bullish kicker signal um, uh, tomorrow on this one. YRCW. This is to illustrate that when you see that doji gap down, that tells you there's a lot of force to the downside. C-O-R-T, doji gap down, lots of force to the downside. So that's why tonight, looking at wing, doji gap down. You might want to be ready to start shorting this one on weakness. Now, if you start shorting this on weakness, what where is your first observable support? You want to see what it does here at the 50. Um, is this 2MD or 3MD chart or other settings? I don't understand what 
two MD, three MD is. Yeah, I think I saw it up in the two forties, about two forty four at one time. Oh, uh, oh, it doesn't matter what size you make the chart. The only thing I'm looking at is right here. Then I kind of doesn't matter whether you are making your chart much longer or much shorter, whatever is comfortable for you. My most, the biggest comfort level I want to have is being able to easily see what's happening right here. Uh, if wing has 500,000 a day, yeah, your, your uh, volume might be a little bit testy. It's usually once you get up over a million that the volume, and even up over a million, there's some stocks that don't have great option volume. So if I am looking at uh, uh, buying puts, and let's say, I'm just going to pick out a number. Let's say I want to buy the 43s and maybe, uh, say, the February 43s, thinking over the next couple of days it's probably going to drop pretty good. And let's say that the 43s are bidding $2 and they're asking $2.80. Well, that's a hellacious spread. So I'll put my bid in just about the halfway point, Let's say at 240 or maybe 245, just so I'm sure to get it. Now, if it's a decently traded uh, volume, they'll probably hit my uh, hit that within 15 seconds, 30 seconds a minute. But if I let it sit there and up to like five minutes. I don't get anybody going after it. I'll close out the trade because if it's hard to get in, it's going to be much harder to get out if things are going against you. Uh, let's see. And this was to illustrate again, when you start seeing these sell signals and closing below the T line, that just puts you in the right uh, uh, right trade at the right time with a much higher degree of probability. Uh, what was the other shorts we have on right now? Oh. Xnet. Doji gap down. Notice what's happened ever since they gapped it down. They've never been able to get it back up above the uh, T line. And notice what they did here at the uh, 50. They bounced back up right here in the T line and the 50. They did a shooting star doji, then opened it lower. What did that tell us about the 50? It was still acting as uh, resistance. Your downtrend would still be in progress. How much you get paid on those calls? Linda, I don't understand that question. Yeah, so you have a little evening star right here. And what's an evening star signal? It's a sell signal. Even though you're not in the overbought area, it's kind of telling you exactly what's happening at this level. They're not going through. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I didn't even take a look at the biggies. Amazon. More than likely heading for the 34 or the 50. Apple. Notice what happened ever since you dojis closed below the T-line. Never has been able to get back up above the T-line. So if you use candlestick signals, and for those people that are new here, there's one very simple explanation of why this combination works so effectively. First of all, candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. And prices do not move based upon fundamentals. 
prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. So it is the most accurate uh, indicator that you're going to come across because it has never changed over the last 400 years and it's not going to change over the next 400 years. Now, these moving averages, the 50 and the 200, they act like magnets because everybody's watching. So if you're going to buy Apple, what are you going to do as an institution? You're probably going to wait until you get down to the 200 to see what, what you want to do. And uh, at that point, that's where the institutions are going to decide whether they want to buy or not. The advantage we have as candlestick investors is we can see exactly what decisions are being made at those levels. So if you're an institution and you're ready to buy, but you see it drifting, what are you going to do? You're going to wait till it hits that level before thinking about buying. That means there's not a lot of buying pressure until it gets to a uh, moving average. That's why they act like magnets. Now, the T line, nobody has this on their chart. Or the percentage of people that do is so minuscule, it doesn't affect anything. So the fact that it works so well tells you it's kind of a natural support and resistance level of human nature. Like a Fibonacci number, it's a natural number, a natural uh, support and resistance. So if you take the combination of candlestick signals that are the graphics of human nature, and you'll put the T-line on here, which is kind of a natural support and resistance level of human nature. Now you've got an extremely powerful combination of knowing uh, whether you're in the right trade at the right time or being in the right trade at the right time. If you are trading a program already that works reasonably well, if you understand the candlestick signals and the candlestick charts and you apply it to your analysis of your system, it's going to dramatically improve the probabilities of being in a correct trade uh, on whatever system you're using. Okay, so that's about all I got. Uh, we can take a look at a few charts. Rick, if you want to do the devil line, um, yeah, just use one. Let's just do one tonight. We're already late. Uh, one, yes. If you, there's a lot of systems where, well, for example, on I think on this system, let's say I want to trade crude oil. All right, this is the March contract. Is that the most traded one? Well, if I go up here and I do this, just put in. F, which is futures dot crude oil, yeah, it brings up that this is the front month. This is the one that's going to be trading with the most activity. If a stock goes below the 200, where is the next level? Or is there a level below 200? Well, you can put on a 500 day moving average or something like that. But once say, you get past all your. Uh, uh, levels of uh, uh, possible support, then your next best criteria is you stay short until you see a candlestick reversal signal. When not a great chart, uh, boy, if you're long, it has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, you want to get out. Chris sold off near the end of the day. But it's still in a J-hook pattern. But this is another one that has to open positive and trade positive tomorrow to stay in it. So this one stayed up above the T-line. Whereas this one also had a J-hook pattern. But it closed below the T-line. So if you'd been long this one, you would have definitely closed this out. Because what did it do to your J-hook pattern trajectory? It basically disappeared. So you want, to, you want to be out of that trade. And again, anytime you close below the T-line, the probabilities go dramatically against you. So here's a big dumpling top on uh, Celgene. 
you stay short with the anticipation that they could be ready to smash this one down uh, pretty hard to the downside. DSW, I would just stay short. Still couldn't close up above the T-line. CDXC, this one you can stay long. Use the T-line as you stop. You can see that you've just uh, stopped or uh, resisted at the uh, 34, so you definitely want to see it get up through the 34 tomorrow. DLNI, another one that just barely got up above the T-line. Even though it just barely got up above the T-line and it did it on a day like today, uh, you stay long. Don't let it close back below the T-line. Union Pacific, stay short. Again, there was your doji gap down, and they haven't been able to close it back up above the T-line. Pfizer, stay short. Again, your doji gap down, still in a downward uh, direction. Whiting, stay short if you're short. Notice your left-right combo, and then the uh, close below the T-line. So you can see that a lot of these will take the guesswork out of which direction you want to be in based upon where you are on the T-line. Cody, somebody mentioned that earlier. You know, your best friend gap up must have been earnings. You look for a 45 degree to come off of here. At this point, if I was thinking of going long or buying, I wouldn't want to see it come back down below the 50. Netflix, this one would have been a toughie. If you were short, it would have closed out. But when it came back down through the halfway point of this candle, you could reshort it because what's that telling you? That if this is telling you the bulls are in control, when they can trade it back down below the halfway point of that candle, it tells you the bears are still in control. Royal Bank of Canada, stay short. Toronto Dominion, stay short. Bank of America. Uh, that's still an ugly chart. This one, I just hate trading this one. But right now, if you're short, you stay short. You definitely should not be long in any of these. ADST, you can stay long on this one, but you're in the overbought area and you're right here at the 200. You're doing somewhat like hanging man. I'd make sure that it opens positive and trades positive. If it opens lower, more than likely they're coming back to test the T line, giving you kind of a, a bobble uh, uh, setup, which means I take profits and wait for it to come back up through the uh, resistance level. This one, you stay short. Uh, it opened much higher and came right back down. Expect more downside. FedEx, stay short. Now, obviously, a lot of these are going to be staying short with the market conditions the way they are. UVXY. You ready to buy this one if it comes back up through the uh, 200? That's kind of your bobble pattern. Notice they came up through the resistance level, back down, supported on the T line. Now, if they come back up through, you can you could be buying this one. Children's Palace, another one that could not get up above the uh, the T line. Now, if I had been short and covered it yesterday. I'd get ready to reshort it on weakness tomorrow because now what do you have going? Kind of a bearish J-hook pattern, making the prospects of filling this gap right here, co coinciding with your 200-day, uh, uh, or yeah, with your 200-day moving average. The bigger the signal, the more compelling. There's going to sell signal. Stay short. Just watch to see what it does here at the 50. If it Opens lower, it's coming back down, probably back into this trading range. Uh, 
Let's see. We did. Well, what's happening to my mouse here? Apple, you're staying short. Goog. Uh, you watch to see what it's doing here at the 200. If you're short, uh, uh, yeah, watch to see if it starts supporting at that level. INFN, nice big uh, breakout today. Uh, if you happen to stay long, don't let it close back below the 200. The QTNT. Hit the 50, pulled back. Uh, boy, I wouldn't be doing too much with this right now. If you're long, you can stay long. I wouldn't be a buyer until it comes back up through the, through the 50. NTLA, you should be out of this one. There's no... Uh, no direction. Uh, Seagate, still look for the 50-day moving average to be the target. Vips, another one that if you'd covered your short position yesterday on the on the bullish move and the, coming up through the T-line, get ready to reshort it on weakness. V-I-R-T, big breakout. Yeah, don't know what to tell you there, Daniel. Um, now, I do know what to tell you. If you're long, if it opens lower, you've got a 90% probability it's not going higher until they come back up through this level. So if you're long, it has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, you close out immediately. Then you just put your buy stop back at today's close. If it comes back up through there, the profit taking is over. Do you look out to the larger charts like weekly moving averages? Brian, you can. Um, if you see a uh, chart that looks good, yeah, check to see what the weekly looks like also. And it takes a matter of four seconds to do that. Here one, nothing great here. You do have a left-right combo. I wouldn't be afraid to be a buyer of this on positive trading tomorrow. And just don't let it close back below the T-line. RMTI. Uh, another one you can be buying. It's just not a great-looking chart yet. If you're buying it, just make sure you... See what happens right here in the congestion area of the resistance levels. Okay, Cody had earnings that kind of figured. Yes, uh, Netflix is coming back. Uh, Netflix and the uh, War Island reversal. I don't know what that word is. Oh, uh, yeah, if they gap this way down, yeah, then you'd have an island reversal up here. Uh, let's see, MXL, stay short. Price line, stay short. Um, or if you covered it because of the bullish engulfing right off the uh, 50, I'd get ready to reshort it on weakness tomorrow. MC, you can be buying this one. It's back up above the T line. Just stay long as long as it stays above the T line. SKF, you can buy this one on positive trading, anticipating the uh, 200 day moving average as your next target. Pro shares, ultra short queues. This is the short queues, um, which means if uh, 
NVIDIA opens positive, bringing up the cues a little bit. This should sell off. It's just the short. CNAT, another one that you want to be out of if it op if you happen to be in it, if it opens lower tomorrow. That bearish belt hold tells you the bears are definitely taking control. And same scenario here. If this opens lower, you want to be out of it. ATVI. Yeah, you can go short on weakness. Hughes. Yeah, there is a wee little teeny gap down here that it might head to, but that would probably pretty much coincide with the 200-day uh, moving average. Okay, vert head earnings. All right. Smegmo. Uh, boy, if you're long... This one has to open positive. If it opens lower, you've lost the uh, oomph on that one. Yeah, you can always uh, look at the weekly to see what the overall trend is. CVRR stays short, especially if this opens weaker tomorrow. That's not one. We did Maxwell. Oh, the Winter Olympics on already. Bristol Myers. Nothing. Wouldn't be long or short this one. There's absolutely no direction. What's your sense of gaps being filled during these times? They could. I mean, remember, they're flashing these prices around. I mean, the other day was on the 1,500-point day, where in a matter of 10 minutes, they dropped the market 900 points. So right now, there's a good possibility. I mean, everybody sees there's gaps, so they make their decisions of whether they're going to buy before it gets to that level. So kind of moves things in those directions. Valero. It just becomes another target to watch. Stay short. Chipotle, stay short, especially with the gap down yesterday. Um, Fix up. Oh, all right. Let me see if I can get the EUA. Which one's you in? Uh, I take it this is the Euro. Um, so the answer to that is, and this is how I learned, many times um, was if I was holding something right here, which direction does it tell me it's going? Or would I be long? Well, obviously, stochastic's heading down, and there's no signs of strength. I have to take a step back and say, would you be long or short this uh, position? And if it's not long, close it out. That's going to be part of the learning process to say, all right, where should I have closed this out? Probably right in here somewhere when it came back down through the T-line. So I learned many times that if I was holding something that wasn't moving in the right direction, that I could probably go back up to where it broke down or had a sell signal confirmed to tell me that was the time to get out, and I remembered that much better uh, the next time. That's what helped me. Take my profits when I shouldn't be taking profits or close out bad positions immediately. So to answer your question, John, I would say they close it out. 
and move on to something else. The longer you stay in a bad trade, the longer it takes for you to get your money over to a good trade. Pro, I would just stay long. I'd use today's low as my stop. And Cassie, nothing here. I'd be out of this one. Taco, nothing here. I'd be out of this one or I'd be short. Roku, Roku was on my list. It needed to get up through the 50 today and it didn't. Right now, uh, I would have probably closed out Roku today with the market the way it was and this failing at the uh, at the 50. RBIO, CBIO, you stay long, still use the T-line as you stop. ZAIS, nothing there, no direction whatsoever. Baba, stay short. Goog, I think we did. Stay short. Boeing, Boeing, I would have closed it out today. Um, it had the prospects of trying to climb back up, but now it's lost those pro prospects. DQ, stay short. Tiva, you can short this one if it opens lower tomorrow. All right, right now we're not seeing any buying and you haven't even gotten back to the oversold area. So tomorrow will be important to see how they open. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of longs in this market right now. Square. You can short this one on a weaker open tomorrow also with the anticipation here's your first target. Okay, everybody, go watch the uh, synchronized swimming. Okay. All right, we'll see everybody in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you then.